How's it going guys and welcome to Formar Ranch. So today I kind of wanted to satisfy my own curiosity and in hopes that I'll learn something new today. I got a 16 inch AR-15 right here. This is a rifle. This is what probably 90% of you guys that may be watching this out there probably shoot with. And I also have this 10 and a half inch pistol build which is extremely common in today's day and age. But what I'm really curious to see is how much velocity is lost when you shoot out of a 10 and a half inch barrel compared to your 16 inch barrel. But on top of that, I'm also really curious to see how silencers affect the muzzle velocity as well. So both of these rifles, you'll notice, have the same Sig Sauer muzzle brake on it. I have a Sig SRD 7.62 QD suppressor out here today. We'll throw it on these and compare how the muzzle velocity changes or possibly doesn't change as well. And I'm going to be using the CED M2 chronograph that you see here behind me to measure these and uh, yeah so let's get shooting guys and as a quick administrative note guys I'm gonna be shooting the Independence 556 ammunition today I don't personally believe this is quite as hot as the Lake City M193 ammo but it's definitely hotter than your uh, cheap steel case ammo so something kinda in the middle but I will be shooting the same ammo through both of these rifles to keep things uh, kind of on an even baseline alright so up first we'll just go ahead and start with the 16 inch barrel unsuppressed and the chronograph is set to a average. We're going to go ahead and put five rounds and see how it does. Okay, so it looks like it only recorded three shots. These chronographs are intended to be used on a bright sunny day, so we have a three shot average. I'll make sure to use a three shot average on the ten and a half inch barrel. It's a very hazy, cold day here in South Texas, but our average muzzle velocity out of the 16 inch barrel is 3,076 feet per second. So we'll go ahead and compare the same to the 10 and a half inch barrel and make sure we get at least three recorded shots for that average. All right, got it cleared out. Go ahead to set it to average. Now we're gonna shoot out of the 10 and a half inch pistol barrel unsuppressed. So we'll go ahead and stop there at three shots to make it fair, three shots average. So we did dro drop quite a bit to 2,797 feet per second. So off the top of my head guys, I can't quite remember the numbers from the last one. I know it was above 3,000 so I'll, I'll put the numbers on the screen for you guys. You'll know the difference before I will. But from what I can remember, we lost about 200 feet per second, which in my opinion, all said and done, when going down to a ten and a half inch barrel isn't too bad. We'll go ahead and put the suppressor on. And as mentioned earlier, this is a Sig Sauer SRD 7.62, so it is a 30 cal suppressor on a 5.56 gun, but should do all the same because we are using the same one on each rifle. So I'm gonna have to get a little further back. And let me go ahead and set it to average. And let's go ahead and see how it changes. So it didn't pick that one up. There we go. Going again with a three shot group. That average is 3,117 feet per second out of the 16 inch barrel suppressed. And we'll go ahead and follow the pattern and switch over to the 10 and a half inch barrel and throw this suppressor on top. All right, so we're gonna pop this nice and warm silencer onto the 10 and a half inch pistol build. Set our chronograph to average and go ahead and load a five round magazine until we get that three round group out of this. There we go, three round group, averaging 2,800 feet per second exactly. So I believe the last one was 2,797. So it pretty much did not affect the average. I'll again put the numbers on screen for you guys. You'll know before I do. Uh, I haven't had a chance to review it obviously. But there you have it guys. So again I wanted to kind of you know satisfy my own curiosity. I've been wondering this myself. Um, but there you have it. These are my results that I got today on a cold day in Texas using the CED M2 chronograph that I plan on using to get a little bit more precise in my long range shootings. If you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below, guys. It's a really cool tool for you to learn really what is going on with your firearms and your particular setup. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to stop by Formar Ranch, and have a good one.